Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Um, I'm Mark Egan, the Chamber's uh, President and CEO. We're so pleased to have all of you gathered for this uh, annual tradition of uh, the State of the Town Address. This morning featuring uh, Colony Town Supervisor Paul McGann. You know that, that um, a year ago about this time, I think Paul was a couple days on the job and was, was here, and obviously it has been a year of, uh, I think, real adventure for her and, and, and uh, some great progress. Uh, so we'll have a chance today to Sir. Hear about some of uh, 2008 and also get a glimpse into some of our administration's vision for uh, for 2009. I talked about a lot of folks who make things happen, um, and we're fortunate to have uh, uh, the leadership of the next gentleman that I want to introduce. He serves as the chair of the Chamber's Colony Business Council. Please welcome Felton McLaughlin. Thanks, Mark, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, there's no doubt 2008 was a, a challenging year for the nation, for the region, uh, but the county colony continues to work diligently to provide numerous services to its residents and businesses, and consistently is ranked as one of the safest communities in the country. This morning, you'll hear about the future direction of the town. With one year as town supervisor under her belt, Paul Mahan returns for her second state of the town address this morning. As we all know, the economic climate has changed dramatically since she first took office. Today, she'll address how she's handling community services, taxes, and business retention and attraction, among other issues in these challenging times. And she'll also be available for questions on topics that may be of uh, importance to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to welcome Paul Mann. Good morning. And thank you very much for that warm welcome and warm reception. It's truly a ple pleasure to join you here this morning for my second State of the Town address. And I'd like to pause for just a moment to acknowledge my fellow elected officials who have joined us this morning. Mike Breslin, Albany County Executive, Sean Ward, Green Island Deputy Major Majority Leader and Albany County Legislator, Nancy Hernandez, my deputy supervisor, Liz Del Torto, our town clerk, Brian Hogan, town board, Jack Murphy, trustee, village of Colony, Tom Tobin, deputy mayor, village of Colony. And I'm not sure if John McDonald is here from Cohoes. Uh, I haven't seen him yet, but to everyone, uh, thank you very much for being here. I truly appreciate it. My first year has certainly flown by, and there have been a lot of significant changes. And uh, Mark, I like your word, adventure. I think I'm going to hang on to that word. Not the least of, of which was the retirement of my dear friend, Lynn Taylor, as the president of the chamber. And unfortunately, Lynn couldn't be with us here today. Uh, but it was last year's state of the town in which I remarked how much I was looking forward to working with Lynn for years to come to which her response was to almost immediately retire. <laughs> so, in all seriousness, though, Lynn's leadership will be missed, and we have been fortunate to have her as an advocate for our region for many, many years. Knowing Lynn, she won't be able to stay on the sidelines side lines for very long either, and I understand she's been very helpful in the transition of the new leader of the chamber and our host this morning, Mr. Mark Egan. Mark, I'm sure, has learned he has very big shoes to fill, and he has been doing an exceptional job. So Mark, thank you for your leadership, as well as for continuing the forum for this event, as well as a thank you to the Chairman of the Board of Director Directors, Michael Keegan of M&T Bank. And a special thank you to Felton McLaughlin for that warm introduction and for all the work you do on behalf of the Chamber right here in the town of Colony. 2008 was a challenging year for all of us, but still, among all the challenges, I enjoyed several great triumphs, both personally and professionally. Certainly in my personal life, there was no greater th thrill than becoming a grandmother for the first time. Though my new job doesn't really allow the time for as much of the doting and spoiling I would like, 
I still managed to make plenty of time for the newest member of our family, even if that meant lots of playtime for him in town hall. In 2008, my administration was able to shed some light on the seriousness of the problems the town was dealing with, and in turn take the necessary steps to begin addressing these issues. I'm sure many of these problems were similar to the ones you face in the business community on a regular basis. Surely some of your businesses have dealt with grim fiscal circumstances. There may have been organizational problems and even the occasional ethical lapses that can create distractions and waste. Many of you have followed our financial situation closely and our strategy in regards to this issue has been simple. Full disclosure to the public while stabilizing and cutting costs so that we can reduce or eliminate the need to go to the taxpayers for more funds. Previously, Moody's Investment Services had cited the town's lack of a, so a solid financial plan as a reason for a continued deterioration of the town's bond rating. Along with our town comptroller, Craig Blair, who's with us here today, I spent the first two months of 2008 developing a comprehensive financial management plan that included a freeze on non-essential spending and other cost-cutting mechanisms. In March, I traveled to New York City to meet representatives from Moody's and present our plan. Moody's indicated our head-on approach was refreshing and our plan seemed to be a solid pathway to an overall financial recovery for the town. This led to Moody's maintaining the town's bond rating the same level, which was significant because we simply couldn't withstand another bond rating drop. The plan outlined some of our goals and strategies for returning the town to financial stability. As we've implemented the plan, we've eliminated nearly 20 positions through attrition, completed the sale of Heritage Park property to Albany County, generating $2.7 million in revenue for the town, and improved efficiency in the landfill's methane gas project, just to name a few. As I mentioned earlier, we wanted to provide full disclosure to the residents, as news of the town's financial picture surely caught most off guard. To this extent, we brought an unprecedented level of transpar transparency to the town's affairs by hosting six financial workshops with the public throughout the summer. We literally went to each corner of the town to share our concerns with the residents. They got to hear firsthand the same plan we presented to the financial experts, and they offered a perspective with insights only they could give, and it was truly invaluable. Too many times, government can isolate themselves from the very people that will be affected by the decisions they make, and this is a situation I wanted to avoid. In 2009, we'll continue our efforts to increase accessibility to town government, and in the near future, I'll be making some important announcements about our next steps in that area. When you think about it from a business perspective, the residents and business owners in the town are the equivalent of our shareholders, and I have maintained from the beginning the shareholders need to be an integral part of the government and the town's financial recovery. They have responded with energy and enthusiasm, and their support of the efforts to address the deficit are truly encouraging. The feedback I receive from residents is consistent, and that is they truly appreciate the head-on approach we have taken this past year. I think there's an overall sentiment that ignoring this problem will not make it go away. As we move forward at the start of the new year, we will continue our restrictions on spending, eliminating more positions through attrition when possible, and thereby creating a leaner, more efficient government. I've also negotiated a new lease for the space the town rents at the Beltrone Center. This, you may recall, garnered some attention in the media earlier this year. A long story made short, the town was paying $80,000 for space that would normally rent around $22,000 to $24,000. This new agreement with the Beltrone Center will redirect nearly $60,000 in funding each year to be applied directly to programs that benefit the town's senior, senior citizens. We worked very hard on this to come to a, a collaborative agreement, come to consensus, and, and all agreed that this is the, uh, the best uh, opportunity that we can afford uh, for our senior citizens. 
In addition to these changes, we'll continue to pursue other cost savings with continued reorganization of the town's workforce to ensure service delivery exceeds the expectations of town residents. Of course, a significant component to exceeding the expectations of the town, town's taxpayers is the dedication and commitment of our municipal workforce. Their efforts on behalf of the town are a source of great pride for me, and too often we let stigmas about public employees cloud the appreciation for a job well done. Take, for instance, the ice storm that battered our town this past December. I was so impressed by the level of response to that weather emergency. Personnel from nearly all town departments responded to aid in the immediate response to the storm. Since then, town staff has been working furiously to clear debris and yard waste generated by the storm. This is on top of their responsibilities to plow and salt for all subsequent weather events. Our public safety personnel from police, fire, and EMS, as well as the town's various volunteer fire departments, were instrumental in the town's response to the ice storm. They worked around the clock in the hours after the storm hit, directing traffic, keeping generators powered up, removing debris from roadways, and checking in on the town's most vulnerable residents to ensure they remain safe. And some overlook the fact that the town has two other municipalities within our borders, those being the village of Colony and the village of Menance. For the past year, I've thoroughly enjoyed working with Mayor Leek and Mayor Coates, and they each played a significant, ro significant roles in providing amenities to the town and village residents during the storm recovery. So you can see it takes a collaborative approach to make this work, and I am fortunate to have such great partners in this endeavor. We are fortunate we remain one of the safest communities in the country to raise a family, especially as the town has grown. And it wouldn't be right to mention our partners in these successes with an, without acknowledging the exceptional public school districts in our town. Though I'm no longer in the halls daily, as I was in my previous life, I remain a strong supporter and advocate for our school districts. Some of my fondest memories of the past year were the opportunities where I got to go back to the classroom and visit with students. This level of collaboration and partnership is without a doubt leading to a more responsive and effective operation. And finally, speaking of more responsive and effective, last year I spoke to you about a desire to level the playing field in terms of development projects in the town of Colony. Plainly put, the town's planning process was bogged down with bureaucratic obstacles, and the town was gaining a reputation as an increasingly difficult place to do business. Even longtime planning board chairman Peter Platt acknowledged this during a recent interview with the Times Union, and he said, I quote, I don't think I'm telling secrets out of school. Anyone who's done business will tell you how tedious the process is. There are mountains of paper lying all over, and nothing seems to get done. Just a few months ago, we took a significant step to improve this process by hiring the town's first ever town-designated engineers. The firms will perform site reviews and expedite the planning process so that good development can be realized sooner and Colony can continue to be regarded as a business-friendly community. One of the points I've emphasized with our town-designated engineers is my desire to redevelop existing sites that are abandoned or underutilized. One of the first projects to utilize the town designated engineers is the redevelopment of the site at Route 9 and 155. I have high hopes this will be a very big success story. The plan calls for a complete redevelopment of the site, which includes a nationally, nationally grown high-end grocer with a regional appeal, and will go a long way to providing a brand new look for this well-traveled corner of our town. The timetables under the previous system would not allow this development to occur. Thanks to our aggressive approach to redevelopment and the assistance of the town designated engineers, the planning board led by Chair Chairwoman Jean Donovan, who has done just an outstanding job without pay, I may add, and our own planning staff, including our director, Joe Lasavita, who's here with us today. This project, which was submitted in the fall, received concept approval in early December, 
and could be well on its way to construction later this year. These changes haven't been easy, and thanks to Joe's leadership and his commitment to implementing this system, we are moving forward. I'm confident, as we intended, the town designated engineers will significantly reduce the time frame in which developers have waited for approval, and at the same time provide a clear-cut standard as to what the town expects from those wishing to do business here. A process that once took 18 months to two years on average will eventually take less than a year. This, of course, goes a long way to helping improve the town's financial picture as the continued growth will have a signif significant impact on the town's tax base. In addition to this development, I announced in December this, that later this month, I'll be forming the town's first ever Small Business Advisory Council. Many of you have expressed an interest, including the Chamber's own Kevin Catalano. The council will be composed of small business leaders and advocates and work closely with my office and the entire town government to provide input and ideas for keeping Colony a place for small business. For those who expressed an interest, you'll be hearing from my office in the next few weeks. And for those who may have an interest in participating but haven't had the chance to reach out to us, I urge you to contact my office so that we can get you involved in this program. In fact, there's a flyer on your tables. If you, if you want to provide us with that information, we'll reach out to you. And we have uh, several, several people from our town government that are working with us on this. Um, one of these is um, Liz Del Torto, who's with us today. So uh, we're, here to, we're here to help out, and uh, we'd love your participation. So if you'd like, you can take a look at those flyers when you get a chance. Like all we do in each aspect of my administration, input from the public is critical to our decision making. So please get involved, and we remain willing to work with you in any way we can. For the past year, I've had the opportunity to work with many of you. From your feedback, some of you at times may have felt the government was here to impede your progress, but this administration is committed to helping you when we can and pointing you in the right direction when we cannot. And that's how I see our role. It's how I approach each aspect of my job. It would be simple to look at the challenges we've encountered and dismiss them as unpassable obstructions, but I choose to see them as opportunities. There's a quote I found from an unknown author that goes like this. We must look for the opportunity in every difficulty, instead of being paralyzed at the thought of the difficulty in every opportunity. So finally, I just want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to participate. I can tell you with great certainty that we are indeed on our way to a full recovery. We have made great progress but there's still much more to be done. 2009 has the potential to hold many outstanding developments for the future of this great town. I thank you all for your support in turning the challenges we'll encounter into opportunities for success. Thank you. I believe in our, our schedule we have a little time for questions, so uh, I'd be more than happy to, to try and answer any if you have some. Is there anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, just, who is the, uh, who's the retailer that's proposed the site of 9135? The, the actual, are you talking about the grocer? It's called Fresh Markets. And they are in other parts of the country. Um, I believe this is the, the first one in, uh, in this area, upstate. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I've, I've had an opportunity this year to spend a lot of time with uh, Mayor Leek and his staff and Mayor Coates uh, and his staff. And, um, I've learned an awful lot about, about the villages, and they truly um, are very, very happy with the setting and the environment that they've created over many years. What we're trying to do is, uh, as we look nationally uh, across the state, uh, the county, and down to local government, obviously there are a lot of 
financial issues that we're going to be faced with uh, most likely for quite a while. Uh, so in trying to, to maintain their independence uh, and the things that they offer to their residents, we have taken on a, a more uh, integrated approach, a more collaborative approach to open dialogue, spend time with the villages, and to see where we can help each other uh, rather than, than look at one as being separate from the other. Uh, the villages are part of the town of Colony, and they, they serve a different, different purpose uh, in many areas. And then in other areas, they have their sp special relationship with, with their uh, residents in their towns, in their villages, rather. So at this point, um, what I'm looking to do is to continue that integration and that collaboration because I think both the town uh, and the villages uh, can, can benefit from each other. Yes, Richard. It's coming. <laughs> you will. Uh, I've, I've reviewed the bills. Uh, there are a couple of changes on the bills. And part of that, one, one particular change has to do with the, uh, the comptroller's uh, requests as to how, how we have to prepare it. Uh, and the other change on there is the reduction tax, one-time deficit reduction tax. Uh, the, it's on the bill at, on a separate line, and I, I believe it says deficit reduction TX. There's so, only so many characters you can put onto the bill. So we had to put the characters that would help you to recognize where that was. It's on a separate line. It's not mixed in with the town property tax, and the reason is that it will not be there in 2010. And, that's why it's a one-time tax. So it, it had to have a separate line so that next year we can just remove it. So it will be included in there. And uh, the other change that you will see is you'll see your town property taxes. And below that, I believe it, it says uh, colony highway tax, TOC highway tax, which you typically had. Uh, as the comptroller reviewed our uh, reports over the last several years, the last three years, the highway tax has been in, in effect, but uh, there was a problem with the way it was being used. And in reality, what it is, it is your property tax is being used. It was being used for operating costs. Uh, so we have three years that it's separated that we have to correct that situation and pay it back. But we, we had to put it into one tax rather than separate it into two lines. So as to not confuse our uh, residents, what we did is you have your town property tax and you have your town and highway merged on that one line. And you will still see town of colony highway tax. And next to that, you should see zero for the expense. Uh, if you don't, you need to call us because that, that is already merged once, so it shouldn't be there again. And it was critical to have that on there because people wouldn't understand uh, you know the difference in the bill, and uh, for some for some people that follow it closely, especially, especially some of our elderly people, it's you know it's stressful to look at something and not understand it. So we tried to make it as clear as we could. So your your one time reduction tax will be on there for 2009, and then it will be gone after that. And it is going to help us tremendously to stabilize. Uh, it will provide us with the cash flow that we need to operate. For 2008, we've been operating with a $10 million cash flow problem, which means that about every quarter when the bills come due, there's no cash. So we had to borrow through RANDs just about every uh, quarter. And uh, then we have to pay interest on that, a high interest uh, on, on that borrowing. And this will create the cash flow uh, for us to operate, which is that cash flow problem is a major part of our deficit as well. So it's going to be a tremendous help. The feedback from the residents, uh, the consensus is that uh, they wanted to bite the bullet and get this over with as quickly as possible. Uh, it was done as fairly as we could. It's uh, 1.0 times your assessed uh, value. So for example, if you're home is assessed at uh, $125,000, your bill is $125. Uh, and then in 2010, from there on out, 
uh, that won't be there. So in essence, you're, you'll probably see your, your tax bills go down. So we do, uh, as, a, as town officials, we truly appreciate the participation of the community uh, in stepping up to the plate to help us. It's not fun. It's never fun asking people for money, but the alternatives were devastating. And uh, I can confidently say that looking at things and always, you know, we have to be cautious because we're, we're only one unit of this whole entire picture. We have, the, we have the federal government and the state government as well. And uh, from our perspective, I'm very confident uh, that we are on the right path. This is going to help us tremendously. And we look at everything cautiously to be sure that if something pops up, we are ready with an intervention so that we can offset things. So the contribution from the community this year is a tremendous help to getting this town back on track. So thank you from all of us. Yes, sir. What kind of revenue? Um, well, well, the expectancy, uh, I'll answer that question first. Um, we originally, the numbers that I was given was around, I, I believe it was around 13 years at the time that I had asked. Uh, and there are a couple different views on this. I don't know if you know this, but we had an independent audit done of the efficiency and the, uh, the, the policies, the way the landfill runs to be sure that it was operating to the best of, of its ability, as well as to give us the future outlook. Uh, the audit indicated that there's a possibility of, of another 18 years or so. And that's not counting any new technology that, that might come up. Uh, and we do have a transfer station that is at the landfill. So we have, we have a, a very good picture there when we look at the longevity. Um, it's still generating. Uh, a good amount uh, to our uh, of revenue, but for uh, the deficit on the deficit end, we we did have a deficit in the landfill, so we are generating revenue from the landfill itself as as well as uh, the methane gas system. But <laughs> what we need to do at this point, uh, part of the recommendations from the the comptroller, as well as uh, Moody's, our auditors and financial ad advisor, um, and it's also written in the laws, you've got to put money aside for uh, closing costs and post-closing costs. So we are in the process of beginning that and uh, taking in uh, the revenue to, to help us with our, our budget, uh, as well as the revenues from the, the gas system. So it's been, um, it's been very stable as far as what's coming in. Where is Craig? Are you, where are you, Craig? Um, for 2008, can you recall an, uh, about what we brought in? Excluding the gas. Excluding the gas, okay. And the profit, um, <coughs> once we pay back and pay everything, well, Coming into part the of the, the, over the previous years, part of it is uh, the general fund has depended a lot on the, on the landfill, so some of the profit was taken out of there into the general fund. Into the fund. general fund, That's what yeah. basically created some of the deficit. Yeah, and that, um, that's actually, that was, that was cited to us by uh, Moody's, and uh, one of their requests was that we stop our dependence on the landfill for our operating costs to, to the degree that we were, were doing. So, uh, you know, as we stabilize, we would like to look at the landfill as, as more profit and be able to stand on our own two feet and use our general uh, operating uh, fund for just that purpose. Um, and that's one of the things that Moody's wanted us to kind of wean away from. Uh, s stop depending on that for general operating costs so much, and also to stop depending on RANs to function for daily operating costs. Anyone else? You're easy this year. 
Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, I, once again, I, I truly appreciate the opportunity uh, to, to join you for uh, this, this annual event. Um, it just gives me the opportunity to, to share with you uh, the real footprint of, of where we're heading for, for 2009 um, and what we've accomplished. So thank you very much and uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you, Mark. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Great report, and, and, and on behalf of all of us here, uh, we thank you for uh, your leadership and vision, and, and uh, good luck in 2009. And speaking of 2009, it's really to everyone in this room, it's up to us to help make 2009 be a great year. So.